Can you explain why you've seen this big surge of migrants? In the last couple of weeks, Border Chief Alejandro Mayorkas was asked on Friday, just six days, before he lifts the Title 42 border barrier. It's very difficult to identify the cause, the pro-migration border chief responded to the reporter. However, a Venezuelan migrant named Daniel told the May 7 New York Times why he and many other Venezuelans are sneaking into the United States, we just want to work. The goal was to provide for the children a quality life and educational opportunities, Venezuelan Abel Oviedo told TexasTribune.org. He had settled in Colombia and then moved to Peru, but started his family's migration in late 2022. I'm a hard worker, Oviedo said. Mayorkas claimed ignorance even though his agency has a 2023 budget of $175 billion. He works with intelligence and police agencies in the world's superpower and is free to read the explanation by migrants such as Daniel and Oviedo, or by U.S. and foreign governments, media, academics, and businesses. Mayorkas' migration has killed at least 1,000 migrants and has imposed vast civic and economic burdens on Americans and their local governments. Those Mayorkas' imposed burdens include lower living standards, more civic chaos, and a tougher future for American kids. After claiming ignorance in response to the reporter's question, Mayorkas then released a jumbled string of words, similar to the bafflegab language used by British politicians. You know the challenge of migration is in one aspect, it's dynamism. It is a very complex phenomenon. We saw the tragic fire in the city of Juarez in Mexico and the impact domestically within Mexico. And since then we saw, over the past two weeks, a significant surge of Venezuelans. We are we have reached an agreement with the government of Mexico to address that surge and we're going to see the results of that agreement very shortly. Mayorkas frequently deflects questions about his pro-migration policies by claiming fundamentally, we are working within a broken immigration system. Mayorkas' broken, system excuse was swatted down on May 6 by Rep. Henry Cuellar, Democrat Texas. Just saying that the system is broken is an easy way to not do what we need to do at the border and working with other people, other countries like Mexico, Guatemala, and other folks that want to work with us. I agree, I support immigration reform. But just to say the system is broken is an easy way out to not doing what we need to do at the border, and that is provide law and order at the border and still respect the dignity of the immigrants that have legitimate, I emphasize, legitimate claims. The New York Times followed the same bafflegab strategy in its May 7 report on the border flood. The paper relied on passive voice statements to downplay Biden's responsibility for removing President Donald Trump's pro-U.S. policies, including the Title 42 border barrier. That question is at the heart of a monumental challenge with a grim history. When the pandemic-inspired restrictions end, border officials will resume an immigration system that has largely failed for decades, but with the added pressure of three years of pent-up demand. About 35,000 migrants are amassed in Ciudad Juarez, another 15,000 in Tijuana, and thousands more elsewhere on the Mexican side of the 2,000-mile-long border. U.S. border officials are preparing for the surge by making it easier for economic migrants can get through the border, the newspaper admitted. White House officials said they have worked for months to prepare for a likely surge and have also taken steps to encourage a more orderly flow of migration. Mayorkas and his deputies are worried that border agents will not be able to complete the catch-and-release paperwork amid the growing crush of migrants, according to a May 5 report by NBC. The concern, the Border Patrol official said, is the time it will take to process migrants when Title 42 goes away. Rather than one agent processing and sending 40 migrants back to Mexico under Title 42 in five minutes, it will take one agent 30 minutes to an hour to process just one migrant and determine where he or she will go next, the official said.
Agency officials, the NBC reported added, have been touting the sector's recent success in processing migrants quickly for release to take Americans' jobs and housing. Mayorkas is a pro-migration zealot. He said his border management is all about achieving equity, which is really the core founding principle of our country. Mayorkas' demands imply equity between U.S. citizens and foreign citizens, and he has opened many loopholes for millions of economic migrants to cross into the United States. In February 2023, Mayorkas said Congress's laws are less important than his pro-migration priorities. Our goal is to achieve operational control of the border. With policies that really advance the security of the border and do not come at the cost of the values of our country, he said. Amid the massive inflow of roughly 2 million global economic migrants in 2022, Mayorkas insists the border is secure and rejects any criticism of his deadly, elite-backed wealth-shifting policies. We cannot have the rights and the needs of individuals who are seeing humanitarian relief in the United States be exploited for political purposes, he told ABC News on January 1. But that humanitarian pitch is tied to a promise of cheap labor for business investors. On December 13, for example, Mayorkas told ElPasoMatters.org. Our immigration system as a whole is broken. It hasn't been updated or reformed in more than 40 years. We look to our partner to the north that has a much more nimble immigration system that can be retooled to the needs at the moment. For example, Canada is in need of 1 million workers and they have agreed that in 2023, they will admit 1.4 million immigrants to fill that labor need that Canadians themselves cannot. We are stuck in antiquated laws that do not meet our current needs. And they haven't been working for many, many years. Extraction Migration The federal government has long operated an unpopular economic policy of extraction migration. This colonialism-like policy extracts vast amounts of human resources from needy countries, reduces beneficial trade, and uses the imported workers, renters, and consumers to grow Wall Street and the economy. The migrant inflow has successfully forced down Americans' wages and also boosted rents and housing prices. The inflow has also pushed many native-born Americans out of careers in a wide variety of business sectors and contributed to the rising death rate of poor Americans. The population inflow also reduces the political cloud of native-born Americans because the population replacement allows elites to divorce themselves from the needs and interests of ordinary Americans. Migration, and especially labor migration, is unpopular among swing voters. A 54% majority of Americans say Biden is allowing a southern border invasion, according to an August 2022 poll commissioned by the Left of Center National Public Radio, NPR. The 54% invasion majority included 76% of Republicans, 46% of Independents, and even 40% of Democrats.